If you have gum disease, you gotta do this. Hi, my name is Whitney and I'm a dental hygienist here to talk about gum disease. And before we get started, make sure to get my free oral care guide. Click the link in the description below or in the pinned comment to join thousands of people who have already discovered all of the essential components for an effective oral hygiene routine. This guide is an action plan for preventing and maintaining a happier and healthier smile at home. And having said that, if you have gum disease, you already know you need to be getting routine cleanings at your dental office, oftentimes more frequently than every six months, they might recommend every four months or every three months, depending on the status of your gum health. But for the purpose of this video, we will talk about things you can do at home in addition to routinely visiting your dental office for professional teeth cleanings. Starting with number one, use an electric toothbrush. Electric toothbrushes are capable of making thousands of tiny strokes in just a few seconds, whereas manual toothbrushes are not. So if you use an electric toothbrush properly, you should be able to clean your teeth above average. And if you are someone with gum issues or you are really trying to improve the health of your gums, the more gum stimulation, the better. And an electric toothbrush is really great at stimulating the gums. As a dental hygienist, I recommend electric toothbrushes to almost all of my patients because they provide less user error when brushing as opposed to manual toothbrushes. Manual toothbrushes have a higher chance of using them incorrectly since they don't do the work for you like electric toothbrushes do. And for any patients struggling with the health of their gums, gingivitis, gum disease, or someone who just tends to get a lot of plaque buildup, I highly encourage them to use an electric toothbrush. And I always say, no matter which one you pick, just make sure you are using it correctly by angling the toothbrush toward your gums and guiding it along from tooth to tooth. If you want more tips on how to choose the best electric toothbrush for your mouth, I will link that video of mine in the description box below, as well as some product links to some of my favorite electric toothbrushes. Also, a question I get a lot, especially from those with gum recession, is how to brush gently but not too gently because we're always telling you how you really need to focus on being gentle when brushing, but at the same time, not too gentle that you're not properly removing the plaque because plaque on your teeth actually causes gum recession to get worse. And this is another reason why an electric toothbrush is great because most of them have pressure sensors where they either light up or somehow alert you that you're pressing too hard. So then you know how hard to press, just hard enough for the pressure sensor to not go off. So when buying an electric toothbrush, make sure it has a pressure sensor especially if you are someone struggling with gum recession or any form of gum disease. Next up, number two, is use a water flosser. If you have gingivitis, like red, swollen, bleeding gums, or severe gum disease with bone loss and gingival pocketing, a water flosser might be your new best friend. It technically doesn't replace traditional string floss, but when you are trying to get rid of swollen gums, the stimulation from a water flosser can be life-changing. Also, if you have high perio pocketing, you have deep pockets in your gums, the floss string literally literally can't reach down into some of those crevices, but water flossers can. So definitely consider a water flosser. I will also link my best products for your gums video if you wanna learn more about the different types of water flossers, but general rule of thumb is to pick one that has a pressure dial, like either low, medium, high, or one through 10. The ones that have only one setting for the pressure, I don't think those are as good because everyone's mouth prefers a different feeling. You want to feel it, but you don't want it to stink. So you wanna be able to play around with the pressure dial to your liking. Number three, Three, floss daily. I know, how annoying, but really, even if you are water flossing every single day, you should technically be running the string floss between your teeth as well. Now, if you really are water flossing every single day, then you don't technically have to use the best proper string flossing technique because the water floss does do most of the work for you. It really cleans around the gum line really well, but there's just that one spot the water flosser can't reach, the contact point where the two teeth meet. So if you quickly just wanna use a floss pick and go up and down with it. I tell most of my water flossing patients that using a floss pick is fine. I actually love the water flosser floss pick combo. However, if you are also prone to cavities, like your teeth tend to get tooth decay every so often, then really you should be focusing on proper technique with the traditional string floss as well. Number four, try interdental brushes. Proxy brushes, go-betweeners, or whatever you wanna call them, they look like little brushes and they clean between your teeth. There's lots of great dental research proving the efficacy of these, and if you use them correctly, which a huge part of using them correctly is finding the correct sizes to fit between your teeth, once you play around and find the correct size, they can really keep your gums healthy. Many dental professionals feel these can replace traditional string floss as long 
long as you're using correct sizes for your individual teeth. The little bristles are actually brushes that go between your teeth instead of using only a piece of string. So they are especially great if you have large gaps around your teeth or you are struggling with properly wrapping the string around your teeth. Or even if you have normally spaced teeth, they work great for everyone. And for those looking to improve their gum health, I tend to notice that with proxy brushes, there's actually a less chance of missing spots than with the string floss because the string floss is more likely to be used incorrectly. You literally just push proxy brushes in and out. Super simple, not much technique is needed. Again, they have to fit correctly though. So for more information on how to find the best fit, I will link my proxy brush video in the description box below. In all, using an electric toothbrush, water flosser, floss, and proxy brushes daily at home will all help to maintain the health of your gums with gum disease. However, if you have tartar below your gum line, like we said at the beginning, there's only so much you can do at home because you cannot physically remove tartar from your teeth without a professional teeth cleaning at your dental office. So be sure to visit your dentist routinely for checkups and cleanings to make sure you are on the right path to improving your gum health. And until then, make it a habit to use proper technique when brushing at least two times each day and flossing and or cleaning between your teeth at least one time each day. And speaking of habits, if you're interested in creating the perfect oral care routine at home, make sure to click the link in the description below or in the pinned comment to sign up for my free oral care guide. This guide is an action plan for preventing and maintaining a happier and healthier smile. And I hope this video helped you. Please like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications if it did. If you want more Teeth Talk, you can visit my website, teethtalkgirl.com, and hang out with me on Instagram at teethtalkgirl. Peace, love, and teeth.